Hi, physics people. So I'm going to be doing uh, both sets of notes from the August the 23rd and August the 24th of 2021. Um, so if you need just the first or just the second part, you can fast forward or stop it early, whatever you need. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is kind of random, and that is um, the reason why I write my T's like this and not like this. And the reason is, is because um, when I am doing these equations, I'm going to have T's and plus signs right next to each other. And because I write my T's like this, it'll be really obvious that that's a T and that this is a plus sign. Um, so just know that that's an important thing to know. And I don't care how you write your pluses and t's as long as you're not getting them mixed up. All right. So after the car lab that you guys just did, um, one of the things we talked about in class was what was the meaning of the slope. Uh, and one of the things that students noticed is that on a position versus time graph, this slope showed you how fast the car was moving. And the reason was, is because if you had a steeper slope, that would have meant that you traveled more distance in the same amount of time. So if I traveled however much time this is, um, in the purple one, I would have gone this far. And the blue one, I would have traveled farther. Um, and so what that slope is going to tell us then is that the slope, on a position versus time graph is the velocity of the car. And so this is something that you guys are going to remember um, and we're going to keep coming back to. And then we also discussed what the meaning of the y-intercept is. And the y-intercept is this place right here um, where the line crosses the vertical axis or the y-axis. Um, and for most of the car labs, people got a y-intercept of zero, which makes sense because at time zero, the car was at the starting line, but some people got y-intercepts and we talked about a little bit about why, but assuming that whatever it is keeps driving at the same speed the whole time, this would be where the object is at time zero or at zero seconds, where are you? Think of it as like your starting line. So the y-intercept is where the object started. And lastly, since this is a position versus time graph, I wanted to point out what the uh, variables were. So position is actually going to be X um, and it's measured in meters. And so position is X. And the only reason I can think of that actually makes sense is that when you have a ball roll across a floor, it's going in the X direction when we start shooting stuff into the air, like rockets, for example, now they're going up and down, which I would call the Y direction. So it makes sense that position is X because in this case, our cars are driving horizontally along the floor, which is the X direction. And then time is going to be T. Again, I'm making sure that it does not look like a plus sign and the units are seconds. Now we can have other units in this, but these are the most standard units. So that is what I'm going to use for my example. All right, so what I wanna do next is I wanna kind of summarize everything we know about the slope of this graph. And so slope on a position versus time graph is velocity. We just um, identified that that was true. Um, and we also talked about the steeper the slope, that means that the object is going to be going faster. So the steeper of the slope, the faster that it's going to go. And then I want to look a little bit at a graph. Um, and so on your worksheet one, you have this graph. 
And on this graph, I want to kind of look at what's going on here. Um, and I'm going to see that I have both a positive slope at the beginning where it's going uphill. I have a zero slope here at the top where it's staying flat. And then I also have a negative slope where it goes downhill. Now, in reality, it's not actually going up and down a hill. What it's actually doing is traveling on flat ground in a straight line. So why does it look like it's going up a hill? Well, as time goes on, let's say between zero and two seconds, this object is going from a position of zero meters to a position of four meters. So to me, that says it's going forwards. If I start at zero and I end up at positive four, that means I'm going forwards. So that means down here, I have a positive slope means the velocity is positive. And it's going forward. Okay, so we have a positive slope is kind of essentially going uphill. This is when the velocity is positive and it is going forwards. So then what is a negative slope? Well, with the negative slope, this is going to be when you started here, oops, started here at a position of four meters and at three seconds. And then, oops, And then at the end down here, you are at a position of zero meters again. So I'm starting at a positive four and I'm going back to zero, which means that I needed to have gone backwards. So my velocity is negative because my slope is negative and velocity is my slope on a position versus time graph. So the velocity is negative. and it is going backwards. And lastly, we have a zero slope. So for the zero slope, I'm going to look back at my graph here. And what I'm going to think about is where is this thing? So right here, it's at a position of four meters. And then here, it is still at a position of four meters, which means that it has not moved forwards or backwards. So that means that this thing has stayed in the same place. Well, the only way that this thing stays in the place, same place is if it does not move. So that means that here, my object is not moving. So if I have a zero slope that is a flat horizontal line, that means that the velocity is zero. And the object is not moving. So next we need to talk about what the y-intercept means. Um, and we already did talk about it very briefly. So the y-intercept is where the object starts. So at time zero, this is where the object starts. And then the last thing is the equation. And so what I want to do here um, is I want to look back at this graph again. Um, and I want to think about how we are going to write a general equation for this graph. All right. So we're going to remember, first of all, that 
in a general equation, you use y equals m x plus b. Um, and for position, that is our y variable. So this y variable is position. Um, but in this case, it's a little bit weird because that variable that we're going to actually use in physics is x. So this is actually going to be x. And that's going to be equal to our slope. Um, and slope on a position versus time graph is our velocity. Um, and so this slope here will then become our velocity. So our velocity is just v. And then instead of x, we're going to use our x variable. And our x variable in this case is time or t. So we're going to go ahead and put times t. And then for our y-intercept, that is going to be where the line crosses our vertical axis. And in this case, this y-intercept is where the object starts. Um, and so if we're talking about where it is, we're talking about its position. Um, and so position is x. So the way that we're going to actually show where it starts is we're going to write x naught. So this symbol here is called x naught. Um, and what it means is it means it is the position at time zero or your starting position. And then I'm going to go ahead and write the rest of these. So x is position. So that's going to be wherever it is at this time. This t will be time. And v will be my velocity. All right. And that concludes the first section of the notes. Now what we're going to do is we are going to look at the second part of the notes. Um, and this part is um, a little bit harder um, to do without you guys doing the activity. Um, so what I'm going to have you guys do is find a stack of things. It could be pens. It could be pennies. It could be little wads of paper. Um, and I'm going to have you do a few things with it. So go ahead and find those things real quick. Um, in my classroom, during class, we used pennies. Um, and you'll need about six of them. So if you could go ahead and find those. I'm going to pause this. Um, go, you go ahead and pause this as well until you find those things. And then I'm going to have you resume. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by having you guys um, put your pennies down as if you were putting them wherever a invisible magic car is. And so you have an Im invisible magic car that's going to drive across your desk um, at a nice even speed. Um, I don't want it to go too fast. You're going to go nice and slow and you're going to put those pennies down every second. Okay, go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, perfect. So if yours look anything like the pennies um, in my classroom today, they look kind of like this, nice and evenly spaced because my car was driving along at a nice constant speed. Perfect. Now you're going to do it again. So go ahead and pick up those pennies. Um, and you're going to have your car drive faster. Now you still need to place the pennies at an interval of one penny per second, but your car is going to be going faster. All right, ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. All right. So now what do your pennies look like? And think about how they compare to when you were driving slower with that magic car. Well, if yours look anything like my students today, my students' pennies looked more like this. They were farther apart when I was driving faster. So 
how do the dots look? Well, when you go faster, the dots are farther apart. All right, so pick up those pennies again. Now we're going to do it again. But this time I want your car to stay in exactly the same spot. And again, you still need to put your pennies down one every second. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. All right, so this time you probably noticed that because your invisible car was not moving, um, you ended up with your pennies directly on top of each other, like so. Now I know that I'm drawing mine with some space in between, um, but this is what your pennies should look like, is all stacked up in a nice little pile um, because it was not moving, not going anywhere. Perfect. So here, to show that it's not moving, the dots are stacked. Perfect. Lastly, I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to teach you about something else about these. Um, and that is going backwards. So I want your car to drive the same normal speed as before, but now I want it to go in the opposite direction. So the way that I've drawing, been drawing my dots, because my invisible car was going to the right, you are going to have your invisible car then go to the left. All right, so ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. So my dots look something like this. I have my car traveling along and it's traveling to the left. So it looks something like this. This is great and all, but I want to notice then that if I look up here and I look up at my normal speed versus my going backwards normal speed, the dots look exactly the same. I have no good way of actually telling when I'm going forwards and when I'm going backwards. So how we're going to be able to decide for that is in a few different ways. The first one is we're going to label where time zero is. Um, and time zero being when we started. So this is time zero. And this one here was time zero, and this is time zero, and over here on the right-hand side for this one, that one was time zero. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the rest of the times, because if that's at zero seconds, I want to know where it is at one second. So this one would be at one second and two seconds, and time of three seconds, time of four seconds. I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of these. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add arrows, and these arrows are going to represent the velocity. Arrows are always drawn from dot to dot, they always start at a dot and end at a dot. And the direction of the arrow is going to show you which way it's going. So in this case, I'm starting at T0 and going to T1, um, and then going from T1 to T2, T2 to T3, and T3 to T4. So the arrows represent velocity. And because it stays the same speed the whole time, I'm going to label them all V1. For this second one, I want you to notice now when I draw them dot to dot, my arrows are longer. And because my arrows are longer, that means that this velocity is faster because my velocity is bigger. My arrows are bigger and the velocities are the same as the arrows and both are bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and label these V2. I could have also labeled them V1, 
but I want to just mostly show that they are the same velocity. And I'm going to make a note here, the longer the arrows, the faster it's going. Now for this next one, it was not moving. And if the length of the arrow corresponds with the velocity, that means that I need to have a velocity of zero, which means that the length of my arrow needs to be zero, which means I can't draw one at all. So here, no arrows are drawn because it's not moving. But what I can do is I can write right here v1 equals zero, v1 equals zero v1 equals 0, just to show that between each of those dots, it was not moving. It had a velocity of 0. And lastly, I'm going to do going backwards. Well, now I need to start at t0 and go to t1, which means my arrows are going in the opposite direction. So this means that when I'm going backwards, my arrows are also going to the left. All right, and again, I'm going to label these all v1 because they're all the same velocity. I know they're different than the first one or the second one, um, but I can just say that it, these are v1. So the main thing is showing that they are all the same velocity because it's going backwards at the same speed. And lastly, um, this speeding up one. So now I want you to get your pennies again. Um, get them ready, picked up in your hand, and I want you to start by putting your pennies down for your invisible car as it's going very, very slowly. And as time goes on, your car is going to go faster and faster and faster. Um, and so I want you to think about those dots. How are they going to look in the beginning? Go ahead and start putting those pennies down. Have your car go really slow at first. One, two, Three, now it goes faster. Four, five, really fast. Six, seven, really, really fast. Seven, eight. All right, so now you should have seen that these pennies started out really close together. And every successive penny would have gotten farther and farther apart from each other as the objects sped up. So that means that my dots are going to be getting farther apart. So dots get farther apart. As the object speeds up. And I will label these T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. And then I'm going to add arrows. Again, I go dot to dot as I label these. So I start at T0, I go to 1, from 1 to 2. Kind of think of yourself as like that kindergartner playing connect the dots. You always went 1 and then 2 and then 3, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if you want to add an arrow here, you can. It's not the end of the world. You can either add an arrow at the very end or not. Totally up to you. Um, now that means two. Um, so we had dots getting farther apart. As the object speeds up, you could also say that the arrows get longer. As it speeds up. Perfect. All right, so what you're going to do next is you are going to look at your worksheet. Um, and I'm going to go over number one with you to kind of help you out and then give you a tip about how to do number two. And then I'm going to have you try to do the rest of the worksheet on your own. So go ahead and open up that worksheet or print it out or find it. Alrighty, so this is what your worksheet looks like. Um, and so what I want to do first is I want to look at how on earth are we going to go from a graph to a motion map. 
and all of these things that I just taught you, these are all called motion maps. Hopefully it made sense. And now we're going to take it one step farther. So for some students, it really helps to keep going and then you'll be okay. So the first thing is I'm going to look at right here at time zero and I'm going to put my first dot where that is. While I go up, I hit the line right away. So my first dot is going to go at zero meters and I'm going to label that as T zero because that is where it is at zero seconds. Now I'm going to go to one second. I'm going to follow it up right here. That's where it's at. Follow it over. So at one second, it is at a position of two meters. So the one second, it's at two meters. And each of these, if you notice, it goes one, two, three, four, five. So at two meters, which is here, that is going to be a time of one second. Then we go time at two seconds, follow it up, look at where it hits, follow it over. So at two seconds, that is at a position of four. So there's my dot at four meters. That is at a time of two seconds. And now I'm going to go ahead and erase this for a second. Otherwise, I'm going to get totally cluttered. And I'm going to keep on going here. So at three seconds now, I'm going to follow my way up. I'm going to get here. I'm going to follow it over. And I notice I'm still at four meters. Well, where do I draw that? I can't just put it in the same spot. Well, no, but I can stack the dots just like my pennies stacked when my car was in the same place. So this spot here then is going to be at three seconds. So T3 at three seconds. Then I'm going to do the next one here at four seconds. I'm going to follow it up and I'm going to find, ah, oh, it's at three meters. So at four seconds, it's at three meters. And I'm going to go ahead and label these positions, one meter, two meters. Might make it a little bit clearer for those of you that were not able to be in class. All right. Then at five seconds, I'm going to follow it up. There's where I hit the line. I follow it over and I find out that at five seconds, it is at a position of two meters. So my next one right here is at five seconds. It's at two meters. Six seconds, I follow it up and over. It's at one meter. So six seconds, it's at one meter. Here's my one meter. Six seconds. And last but not least, seven is at zero. So that means that at seven seconds, it's going to be back at zero. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play connect the dots again. All I need to do is go from 0 to 1, from 1 to 2. Between 2 and 3, it did not move. So I'm not going to actually draw a velocity arrow there. But 3 to 4, it moved. 4 to 5, 5 to 6, and 6 to 7. And then all I need to do is label these velocities. So this is velocity 1. This is the same velocity, so this is velocity one again. Here, it did not move, so my velocity two is zero meters per second. Here, I'm gonna have a velocity of velocity three, because now I'm going a different direction and a different speed, and then I'm done. That's all there is to it. Now, my recommendation to do number two, number two is not horribly difficult as long as you label the dots. So you're going to start here at the beginning and you're going to label them. This is T0, that's the beginning, that's time zero. And then you're going to go T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, T9, T10, T11. And the students that I have actually number these dots, all of a sudden everything makes perfect sense and they get the answer right and they tell me that it's easy. If you do not label them, it makes it much, much harder. So please take my advice 
and label them. And I'm going to show you how to do the first two dots, and then I'm going to let you go uh, to do your own for the rest. So here I am at zero seconds. At zero seconds, I'm going to look up at my number line, and it is at and it is at five meters. So at zero seconds, I'm going to draw a dot at five meters. At one second, I'm going to look up and it's at four meters. So at one second, I'm going to come up here and draw a dot at four meters. And that is all